Hey everyone, thanks for taking a look at my tutorial, uh, Cinema 4D. Today I'm going to be uh, walking through the Surface Deformer. Um, I haven't seen a, a lot of information out there on this particular deformer, so I thought I'd uh, give this tutorial a shot. Um, I used it for this little uh, animation that I put together recently. As you can see, it uh, allows you to take one object and uh, have it follow along the surface of the other. Uh, again, uh, right here I think kind of uh, shows how how nice this deformer can look. So um, I'm going to put together uh, basically, uh, I guess, the basics of this scene. Uh, and then uh, perhaps I'll create another tutorial to show you um, uh, the camera motion and the lighting and everything. But uh, for now, for the sake of the time, I think I'll just show you uh, how to get one object to deform on another. So first things first, I need to change the render settings. Bump this up to 720p. Set this to all frames. Uh, and in case I do decide to make this uh, full tutorial, I'm going to set this to 150 frames so it can be a five second animation. Um, and something else I'm really in the habit of is uh, I'll do, what is it, Alt V, I believe. Go to View, set this opacity up to 100% so that it blacks out the, uh, the part of the window or the viewport that will not be rendered. Uh, next thing, I'm going to create a landscape. And let's bump that up just a little bit. And I'm going to raise it a little bit higher. Uh, then I'm going to add a uh, floor. And raise the floor so that it intersects just a little bit. So that uh, uh, if we do set up cameras and everything, and, and the camera is looking beyond the... Uh, landscape object that it doesn't just suddenly and abruptly go to black, right, to where uh, uh, this floor object will set it to uh, blend in. So next thing we need to do is create um, an object that's going to uh, follow the contours of this. So let's create... Uh, I, I could set up an arrow, but for the sake of time, let's just do a little cube. So this cube, let's bring down the Bring it down here. The Y obviously needs to come down to maybe like, I don't know, five centimeters. And then bring this way in here. And we also want to add some geometry to this. Let me bring this a little bit more narrow. Uh, I'm sorry, so if I go to display. Actually, I already have it. I'm sorry. Uh, so let's just increase the segments here. And the reason I'm setting up all this geometry is so that it, as this thing moves along the surface, uh, it'll, it'll bend and conform to the contour of this landscape a little bit better. So next thing we need to do is add the... Surface, if I, uh, surface deformer, I'm sorry. Drop that into the cube. And within the surface deformer, it's asking us what do we want it to follow, essentially. So I'm going to grab this landscape, drop that here. And I've had the best luck going with uh, mapping, change, the, the UV mapping. And you can see right away that it goes and follows the contour of the landscape, which is nice in itself, and I'm sure there are uh, tons of uses for that. But what we need to do is change the scale so that it looks more like the actual little cube that we want it to look like. So let's, let's bring this down. Make it way smaller. And if I zoom in, you can see now you can see where it's following the contours. And the offset, you can play with this to bring it up or down so that it's not intersecting through the landscape quite as much. Right about there looks good. Uh, 
uh, just to pretty this up a little bit, I'm going to temporarily turn off the surface to farmer, zoom back in on the cube. Let's make this cube editable by hitting C on the keyboard. Let me grab these points. T for scale. Holding down shift to grab these two that I somehow missed. T to scale it again. E, and let's stretch this out quite a bit. Turn the surface deformer back on. And now we can see our little cube here looks a whole lot more, more like an arrow. So now it's as simple as animating this to follow along. So if we were to set up a camera and animate, how nice that looks, right? Flowing across that surface. And to even things out a little bit, let's drop a couple of uh, subdivision surfaces on here. So we'll add that to one. Drop another one in, add the landscape there. That'll just smooth everything out. So just to make this a quick and easy tutorial, let's go to, let's come right here, set a keyframe, come to the end, set a keyframe, we'll watch how that animates through. Pretty nice. Uh, render settings uh, for the sake of speed. Uh, I'm going to leave it on standard. Uh, anti aliasing. Let's set this to, uh, actually, let's leave it to geometry for now. Um, I will add ambient occlusion just because it makes it look so much nicer. Let me add a couple of really quick textures. So to the landscape and also to the floor. Add a nice white there. Render that out. See how that blends now a little bit better. Um, let me add a black texture very quickly to the to the uh, cube. Looking a little bit better. Um, actually I'm going to add Add a camera, enable that camera. I'm going to tip just a little bit here. Basically, I don't want the I don't want the floor to show because let me back this up just a little. All right, that's perfect. I don't want the floor to show because when I add a, uh, a background to the scene to add some nice reflections and so forth, uh, it sometimes will create issues. Actually, you know what? Never mind. I will leave it so we can see it. All right, perfect. Um, I'm going to add. Probably the coolest plugin that I've come across is this SIBL. It's free online if you do a search for SIBL Loader. Um, it's a download for Cinema 4D version. Uh, let's just grab this. Doesn't really matter for this purpose. Um, I'm going to turn off the GI. I don't want to load the background. I do want it to load sunlight and any, any other lights that uh, are in the preset. I'm going to turn off this camera temporarily so that I can take a look at the sun here. So within this this IBL set that just loaded there's a sunlight. So let's turn that down to 100%. I'm going to change the shadows to soft. Um, and I want to see what angle that sunlight is pointing. And it actually is 
just how I want it. I want to turn it just a little bit off to the side, maybe a little bit steeper angle. Uh, now when I go back into the camera, bring this forward. Now when we do a test render, yeah, now you can see where it's causing the shadows and so forth. Uh, let's get a little bit of reflection going. So in reflectance, let me turn off that default specular, let me add GGX, let me come down to layer mask, set this to Fresnel, quick render, obviously way, way too reflective. Turn up some roughness. Turn down the reflection strength. Go to this black, add a little bit of reflection. Do Fresnel here as well. I'm trying to speed this up. We've got a, a thunderstorm front coming through here, so. I'm guessing we're going to get uh, blasted here within the next 20 minutes or so, so I want to kind of get this done. Again, that black is way too reflective, so go to reflectance. See how this looks? A little bit better. All right, so render settings. Got it to all frames, five seconds long. This is all right. Save, I want to save this. Uh, save this. Change this to a uh, QuickTime movie. Change this to H.264. Anti-aliasing. Bump this up to best. One by one, two by two. I think it's fine. Change that. Do another real quick render. Alrighty. Obviously, not, not the most beautiful or perfect thing. In fact, let's just... I have a couple of minutes. Um, let me go into this material editor. Let's add a bump. Just a real simple noise. Render that, see what that does. And not really what I was looking for, but let's bring this global scale down to like 20 something. smaller. I want it to be very small, very subtle. Go down to 1%. Alright, file, save, render. And I'll be back when this is done so we can take a look. Okay, so the, uh, the uh, project finished rendering. And uh, just so you know, I, I paused the render. I uh, cut the, um, the resolution down just a little bit to speed up the render. Um, I removed that bump channel that I had. And I set the, I think, the blur on the uh, reflectance up to, I don't know, maybe 5%. Um, so, you know, anyways, so th the lighting on the scene isn't great, could be a lot better, but uh, I wanted you to see the, the results of um, this deformer here, so... So I, I really like this deformer, and I'm sure there's a million different ways that you can use it. I just love how it causes the object to just follow along the surface like that. Uh, bear with me for one last second. I want to show you another project that I did using this technique, and I'd actually forgotten about it until it was rendering, and I uh, remembered at that point, but here's another one with a similar style. 
some sort of weird space orb roaming through the desert. So the last thing I wanted to touch base on, uh, if anybody sees this and they're interested in learning a different technique that I figured out, um, uh, but it'll, it'll be a little bit longer of a tutorial, I'm willing to guess, because um, I figured out a way that you can set up this object. Uh, let me, let me, oh yeah, uh, I figured out a way to get this object to follow along a path as well. Um, it's not as easy as a, you know, following a spline or anything like that. Well, there may be an easy way, but I, I couldn't figure it out. So I came up with a method for getting this object to follow along, for example, a path that would wind back and forth over uh, this uh, this landscape. So uh, if anybody has an interest in that, let me know in the comments, and uh, uh, I'm pretty sure I'd be able to put that one together relatively quickly. All right, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed.